Hello and welcome to, of course, another sponsor collaboration between myself and, once again, Ness, who many of you will recognize from the channel and from the Discord server. And for those who are new to the channel, you might wonder what is this collab thing that I'm talking about? Well, put simply, it's one of the many perks that I offer for people who decide to support the channel on Patreon. There's four different tiers, $1, $5, $10, and $20, and for each of those, you get a number of advantages and perks as a member of the channel team. This one, for instance, allows you to work with me every month to craft a custom video of your choice, and it could be on either of my channels, not just car-related, but even other stuff too. So if you feel like supporting the channel, but actually getting a load of cool stuff for yourself as well, including this, free t-shirts, the exclusive lounge, and even my novels, then of course, click the link down below and check out those perks for yourself. But that's it from me, and now let's hand it over to Ness. Greetings from my bedroom. I know, I know, it's been a long while since I last did a collab for this channel. The two major reasons why I took a break is, for one, 19, going around copyright is a pain, but also, this is likely one of the biggest videos I will ever do for this channel, as I'm doing my take on a series that was established only last year, Circuit Strategy, a video series dedicated to show you all the ins and outs of a track and helping you get better at said track. Thing is, all videos prior to this one was for GT Sports circuits, fairly obviously. This one, however, is the first video for a track that has only appeared in older games. Only two games to be precise. The iconic, and I really do mean iconic, Special Stage Route 11. Now, just as a heads up, this will likely be the only video of this type I'll do. My procedure for this breakdown is very different than normal. Instead of focusing on the online racing and dealing with bad drivers, this is more focused on driving on the track in career mode, since the only way you can play with other people is in the rarely used two-player mode, and as such, is not as in-depth. Here's the thing though, the series is primarily associated with difficult-to-learn tracks like Nurburgring or Autopolis, and the thing about past Gran Turismo games is that most of the tracks that are very difficult for beginners aren't usually necessary to learn majority of the time. Rome Knight can only be accessed by random one night racing in GT2, the only time you have to drive on complex string is in a time trial with a roof in 3, and Sita de Aria is only driven in the special events in 4. Route 11 is pretty much the only track which is very hard, but also comes up often in both career modes of GT1 and 3. But oh boy what a track this is! What I'm going to do in this video is give you the history of the track in the series, break down the track corner by corner, give you some tips on how you can improve and what you can expect when you drive there, and advice on endurance racing. And with that, let's get started. As I said, Special Stage Route 11 was added in the first Gran Turismo game, as the ultimate challenge and a bigger brother of Special Stage Route 5. It didn't make the cut for Gran Turismo 2, although it was planned according to sources, but it did make a return in Gran Turismo 3, with a different layout in the middle section, making it one of the only tracks in Gran Turismo to have different versions layout-wise between games. This is also one of those tracks where if you ask the old Gran Turismo veteran what they think about it, they either love this track and enjoy racing the table, or despises it for being way too hard, especially in Gran Turismo 1. Now, if somehow you know me by my own channel, you'll likely think that I fall in the latter category, Due to some meme I posted there. But actually, I love Route 11. I just think it's overused in simulation mode of GT1. If you want to 100% both career modes of Grand Turismo 1 and 3, you'll need to encounter this track a lot. In fact, out of the three endurance races in Grand Turismo 1, there are two of them just on this track. Needless to say, knowledge is key. So now, I'm going to dissect each corner one by one on both versions, in forwards and reverse, detailing you what you need to do on each corner and give you the tips on how you can improve. I'll be using a blue 1992 Mitsubishi GTO with all upgrades, but with a level 1 turbo in Gran Turismo 1, and a Toyota GT1 road car for Gran Turismo 3. I'll also have the track layout presented as well as the corners number for reference. Here we go. Treat it as a straight, but also land up fast for corner 2. This is especially hard on Gran Turismo 1 due to its wonky brake physics. Even if the car is almost done turning before you brake, you can still have the car turn drastically to the right. As you can see, I made that very mistake even when braking to light myself up. It's easier with fast turning cars, but you'll need some practice regardless. Brake as soon as you exit corner 1 and take it smoothly. 
As I mentioned, the lead up to this corner is pretty hard, but the corner itself is rather simple. Turn left to position yourself for the right corner banner. If we stop here and examine the turn like this, we can actually see that if we take it straight, we have next to no room to squeeze in and turn without hitting the wall. That is why turning left before this corner is crucial, so that we can open up more space to drive through there. Take this corner easy to prepare for corner 5. Also be aware of the cap in the wall of the left in GT1. Just take it smoothly. The first hairpin of the track. Take it slowly after you break and then hit the gas once you see the exit. Now we come to the section that separates the two versions of Route 11. On GT3, it's simple. Same as Corner 6, but even slower. On Grandersville 1, however, there are 5 more corners to go through, meaning instead of having 18 corners in the Grandersville 3 version of the track, there are 23. Overhead is the corner exclusive to that version in italics. Be careful when going down to prepare for the next corner. Now this isn't quite as problematic as corner 1, as the section as a whole is slower, but it still needs to be addressed. Regain control in the corner and ease off the gas until you find a straight. And now we come to the most infamous section of the track, quite possibly the hardest section in the entire Gran Turismo series. Yes, even harder than likes of Corkscrew, or Rouge, Basically this corner of the Nürburgring. The Solemn Section. A right turn followed almost immediately by a left-hander. I'll bet some of you are having PTSD of approaching this corner and trying to take it as smoothly as you can, only to crash into those tiny walls separating the corner. It's a massive killjoy and can lose very precious time if this happens, especially if you're using a turbocharged vehicle with massive turbo lag. It's going to take many, many practice laps to get this right. So here's my advice. Turn right once the corner is able to drive through, brake hard, and then turn left to fit through. Remember to take it as easy as possible and don't overcook it. This is crucial. Unless you're someone like me who has spent countless hours playing this game and driving on this track, there is no need to treat it as a speedrun. It is very tempting since usually in the first lap of the race you'll have a hard time getting the lead even in something as OP as a copyright LM. But remember that the AI isn't even that good at this section. So even if you take it slow, you can still overtake the AI at the end of the section. Again, take it easy. Take it at full throttle, but also be prepared for the right corner coming up. This is also incidentally where we can say hi to Grand True Smell 3 again. Brake hard and smoothly turn right and then turn left to prepare for the carousel. Keep an average speed in this corner and then hit the gas once you're ready. A pretty common mistake I've experienced in both games is that I drive too close to the wall on the inside and I lose control and the car drifts into the wall. I would recommend trying to make sure that the tires don't make contact with the bumps if that keeps happening to you, as that can also cost lots of time. Just treat it like a straight. As soon as you see the corner after the hill, brake hard. Especially difficult in Gran Turismo 1 with the brake fences mentioned earlier. After that, take it smoothly and then hit the gas. Depending on the car, you'll have to treat it as either two left-hand corners or one long corner. It mostly depends on how fast your car can turn. The GTO, for example, can take the corner as one. Pretty much the exact same as corner 6. Think of it as the hairpin corner from Special Stage Route 5 Reverse. Take the corner very slowly and accelerate once you straighten yourself towards the middle of the track to prepare for the last corner. Probably the most difficult section in the Gran Turismo 3 version of the track in my opinion. Braking here can be very difficult at first. The trick I use is in GT1, brake once the right part of the corner has loaded, and in GT3, brake at a 100 meter sign. Keep a steady speed and accelerate when ready.
So that's my breakdown for Special Stage Route 11 in Forwards. Now for some drips for driving this track in reverse. Although you may think there is not much to talk about a track in reverse compared to forwards, that's generally not the case. Some sections can be looked at very differently in reverse for various reasons. As an example, I found a license test at Seattle in reverse in Grand Turismo 3 very frustrating as a kid because I cannot pass the first section at a decent speed, whereas it was way easier to drive in forwards due to how the corner is laid out. Now, I'll still go through this breakdown faster than in forwards regardless, but I would still say that you need to learn how to race on this track in this direction efficiently, as events due to this version in GT1 I would say are much harder than in forwards, the 2 car championship and all night 2. Ironically, the track itself I find easier in reverse than in forwards, but the cars limited for this track are much harder to drive, which is why I used the GTO for this presentation. Break near the pit stop exit and slowly turn left, anticipating corners 2 and 3. Funnily enough, I find this challenge here similar to the first corner forwards, but I also find it harder in GT3 than in GT1. I don't know exactly why, but the point is to make sure that you are on the left before you break for the chicane. Take it very slowly and accelerate once you are ready. Brake hard and take it smoothly, just like in SSR5. Basically the same idea as in forwards. Easier than in forwards due to not having to worry about the hill, but you still need to be patient and exiting the corner can be a little tricky if not prepared. Slightly faster than in forwards, but the idea still applies. Be more careful in this version and get ready for corners 10 and 11. I will stab this memory out of my skull! Turn closely on the right corner to position yourself for the left corner and then hit the gas. Again, this is where the difference applies for both games. Same as forwards. But, there's a neat trick in this section that makes this slalom much easier. As you exit the right hand turn, position yourself so that the car is facing the gap. That way, you only need to turn once instead of twice once you reach this section. Once again, take it very slow and don't push it. With the trick from the last corner, it should be easier than forwards, but you still need to concentrate. Brake hard and be careful not to overcook it hitting the opposite wall in the process. Treat it as a straight. Brake really hard and treat it like the same corner in forwards just turning right. Pretty much the same principles as forwards. Stay on the right and turn to maximize the chance of driving through the gap. Once again, look out for the gap on the right. Easy 90 degree corner. Again, just like a straight.
And that's my breakdown for Special Stage Route 11 in both forwards and reverse, in the Gran Turismo 1 and 3 versions. So all in all, this track requires a lot of practice and skill to get down, regardless of which game you're playing. Thankfully, you can easily access this in Gran Turismo 1 by going through the time trials events, but the downside is that you can only drive it for 2 laps before restarting, making it very hard to learn the first corner at high speeds. However, you can also go to the All Night Endurance and go to the test run, where you don't need to worry about the lap limit. And in hindsight, I probably should have done that for my recording. <laughs> but you do need to do an IA license to even get it. In Gran Turismo 3, you can either practice in the qualify section of a career event, or play through arcade mode to unlock it there. Now, as far as some extra tips for this track, you're not gonna like hearing me say this, but wall riding is an option. I opted to leave out mentioning this when it came to the breakdown for obvious reasons, but the unfortunate truth of the matter is it's technically a viable strategy since you cannot damage your car in any capacity and the walls don't slow you down that much. In all fairness, I only like to use this strategy in GT1 at one corner, corner 2 in forwards. And even then, I only crash into the wall and then move on, since wall riding in GT1 does slow you down too much. In GT3, however, if you really are struggling way too much on this track no matter what, you can always wall ride on some corners, specifically these four. Obviously, however, if you want to race clean, don't bother with wall riding, and I would advise you avoid it in two-player mode. I would say this track obviously benefits cars that has lots of great cornering ability, like the GT1 or the Del Sol LM, but it is doable on heavier steering cars like the Viper or GTO. Keep in mind that in Gran Turismo 1, it would always show up as a last race in every championship it's in, so by then you should have plenty of experience with your car you're using. And for the endurance racing, the fact hard tires is recommended means that taking this on in both races is by default harder. Just remember when driving on this track, don't push it the first time through, and try not to get angry at the slalom section. It's not easy, but just remember, practice makes perfect, even if it takes you a month, two months, even a full year or more. Heck, it has taken me years to finally get the ins and outs of this track, going from hating it for a long time to loving it. If someone like me, who had lots of trouble in the past can come to terms even after multiple attempts of failure, you can too. As far as Gran Turismo 3 is concerned, I do overall think it's easier than in GT1, not just because of the lack of the chicane, but the physics of the game are slower, thus easier to adapt to, and allow for a more smoother experience. So tackling corners in this game isn't as big of a deal, though it can still bite back in various places. That said, however, whenever I encounter this in a championship I've already completed when collecting cars from the prize draw, I usually skip this race due to how long it takes to complete a lap compared to the other tracks in the game. And yes, you can manipulate what prize car you get, but that's a topic worthy for another video. Once again, there is an endurance race on this track in this game. If you're not using one of the F1 cars, it can be pretty difficult, but just remember to keep your cool and be wary of your tires. The last tip I'll mention is whenever you drive on this track, turn up your brightness of your TV and see if that helps any better. Better visibility ain't a bad thing. And so, that's it for my guide of Special Stage Route 11. It's definitely a very common pick for wanted tracks to come back, as regardless of the bullshit it may bring to some people, it's still a fan favorite for many others, and I would certainly like to see what challenge it may bring if it ever comes back to, say, GT7. Although considering how much less character the PS3 versions of Route 5 was compared to the previous incarnations, the same thing may apply to 11, and I don't know if it will please everyone. If it does come back however, I will still let Mike do the circuit strategy guide for this track, since the physics of the game now compared to the past could totally change the way you approach it, especially with the fact that you can damage your cars now. Whether it's for the harder or easier is yet to be seen, but I hope you enjoyed my breakdown, and this is Ness in Pajamas saying, Fluffy Pillows. And a small walls in the slum need to go. Stat.